Hello, everyone. Welcome back to freepilotgroundschool.ca. This is our 11th lesson on meteorology. We're going to be discussing air masses. The definition of an air mass is a parcel of air with relatively the same temperature and moisture horizontally. An air mass generally adopts the characteristics of the underlying terrain. So when we talk about relatively same temperature and moisture, there could be quite a big spread. However, uh, we'll learn about this a bit more in front. So if we have a, a one area that really should have the same temperature and moisture as another area, but, but it's actually changed over a given distance or a short distance, um, that would be a, a different air mass. And then at that interface, we call that a front. A slow moving high pressure system is ideal for the formation of an air mass because the air is in contact with the surface of a long, uh, with the surface of the earth for a long time. So we discussed that an air mass adopts the characteristics of the land mass beneath it. So we name air masses after their originating temperature and moisture characteristics. So in Canada, for example, we have continental Arctic CA air. So this is a dry, very cold, stable air with a low tropopause. It originates in the Arctic uh, regions. We have maritime Arctic, which is uh, uh, similar to the uh, continental Arctic, but it's moist cold air and it's unstable at lower levels and it originates uh, in maritime and uh, northern maritime regions. We have continental polar uh, air masses, which are similar to continental Arctic, but they're not quite as cold uh, as the continental Arctic. Then we have the maritime polar, which is cool, which is a cool air mass, tends to be unstable. A continental tropical air mass we don't have in Canada. They're dry, very hot, very unstable, the high tropopause. This is what we would find over uh, the southern United States, let's say Texas or Nevada. And then we have maritime tropical. We also don't really have this air mass in Canada. Uh, and it's moist, hot, very unstable. This is what we would find in, let's say, the Caribbean or Florida. So here we have these different types of air masses where they are located around the pole or the top, the North Pole there, we have a continental air mass. Then there tends to be like an Arctic front between that and the continental polar air mass. Then on either coast, we have maritime polar air mass. And then you can see the maritime tropical air masses down uh, by the Baja and the West Coast, as well as the Caribbean, Southern Florida. And then you see a small continental tropic air mass there over uh, the southern United States, northern and Mexico. An air mass can be modified uh, by the speed at which it travels, the terrain that it moves over, and the temperature difference between the air mass and the surface. So all it can be modified the by the depth of the air mass. If we warm an air mass from below, uh, we create an instability and convection, and then we make the air mass characteristics climb to a high altitude. So for example, a, a towering cumulus takes those air mass characteristics up into a higher altitude. If we cool the air mass from below and create stability, we will limit uh, the weather uh, to the lower altitude. So that's when we have fog. The uh, weather is determined by a number of factors uh, of an air mass, the temperature of the air mass, the moisture content of the air mass and its stability. Each one of these factors uh, will modify the weather. So it, uh, Let's say we have an air mass that's less stable, we're like going to end up with, let's say, thunderstorms if the moisture content is high enough. So even though an air mass uh, has constant uh, temperature and uh, moisture properties, it can change over the seasons in geographic respects. So, for example, in the uh, winter, an air mass, a given air mass, will be colder and drier than the same air mass will be over the summer. If we move an air mass over water, we'll gain moisture. And if we push the air mass up a slope, we, the uh, water vapor will condense and release the moisture. An air mass can be dry and warm as it gets pushed down a mountain and create a Chinook. There are four uh, air masses in North America that uh, predominantly affect our weather. First off, we have a continental Arctic air mass over the North Pole that pushes down. Sometimes when you get really cold weather in, uh, let's say, Winnipeg or so, it's in a northern wind. It's uh, from the continental Arctic air mass kind of blowing down. Also, I have a continental polar air mass over most of uh, Canada and maritime polar over the coasts. 
Uh, sometimes we end up with maritime tropical air masses from the uh, Caribbean forcing their way up, pushing their way up. They tend to bring a lot of uh, heavy rains because they are so moist over coastal regions pushing up into uh, Ontario. Air masses are named after their temperature and moisture contents. For example, the continental Arctic is going to be a dry, cold air mass. Maritime tropical will be a, a wet, hot air mass. Factors that affect the weather are temperature, moisture, and stability. And the air mass properties can change slightly based on the latitude, season, and elevation. A few sample questions. A maritime tropical air mass is predominantly A, cold and moist, B, warm and moist, C, warm and dry, D, cold and dry. So we should know maritime, so it's going to be moist, and it's tropical, so it's going to be warm. So correct answer is B, warm and moist. Air masses adopt what properties from their underlying land mass? A, stability and pressure, B, stability and temperature, C, temperature and moisture, and D, temperature and pressure. So if we recall back to our first slide, the definition of an air mass, they will uh, get from the, uh, the land mass underneath, they will adopt the temperature and the moisture. So if it's over uh, maritime regions, you'll end up with kind of cool, moist air and let's say you're down in the Caribbean it's going to be warm or hot and moist uh, air. Here's a bit of a tricky question. Can a maritime tropical air mass ever be colder than a maritime polar air mass? And the correct answer is yes it can be. And the reason that it can be is because there might be all sorts of different local variations that affect uh, the actual, the absolute temperature of the maritime tropical air mass or the maritime polar air mass. However, it would be uh, impossible if at the exact same time, if there was a front between a maritime tropical air mass and a maritime polar air mass, you wouldn't say that the maritime uh, tropical air mass would be, would be warmer or be highly unlikely anyway, because it comes from, uh, let's say the Caribbean, and it'd be highly unlikely that uh, the, the temperature in the Caribbean would be warmer or sorry would be colder than it would be in the maritime polar regions let's say in newfoundland which of the following air masses is unlikely to be found in canada so it's kind of the least likely so continental arctic well we're going to have that over our northern territories uh, continental polar is going to be over the majority of canada a lot of times the maritime tropical that's pretty unlikely so that's going to be hot moist air the caribbean doesn't come to canada very often maritime polar we see that all the time in the uh, maritime regions the western the coastal regions out west so the correct answer is c maritime tropical is unlikely that concludes this lesson on air masses thanks for joining me and we'll see you in our next uh, lesson on fronts